Please welcome to the stage, Executive Director of the Matthew Shepard Foundation, Jason Marsden. Good evening. Y'all are beautiful. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I'm uh, tremendously privileged to welcome you to the 20th anniversary Bear to Make a Difference Gala for the Matthew Shepard Foundation. <clears throat> Give yourselves a hand. For the last nine years, I have had the high privilege to lead this magnificent, this resilient, big-hearted organization. As many of you know, I was even more privileged for too brief a time to call Matt Shepard my friend. In the autumn of 1998, so young and so unknowing of what was to come, all of us watched with disbelief and astonishment as the theft of Matthew Shepard from our lives took on the weight and gravity of a national tragedy and the contours of a turning point in our history. We dwelled in fear and horror, unknowing of what a saga was yet to come or our role in creating it. Matt's story did not follow the standard script for tragedy and loss, to say the least. Millions of strangers, for the very first time, pondered mysterious things like Laramie and Wyoming and hate crimes and the safety of our fellow community members, the LGBTQ community, which did not yet have its name at that time. And we found at the core of this story affection for this young man and sorrow for his loved ones and distress at the notion that these crimes have been happening since time immemorial, unseen by most, uncared about certainly by all of those who amass and never yield their power. And we felt at that moment in Wyoming and everywhere else the word was carried, all of us, gay and straight and otherwise, rural and urban, comfortable and afflicted, we felt the importance of standing up for this precious young man and the place that he called home and the people just like him all over the world. And before our eyes rose up this determined family and their countless allies and this organization that has come to bear their son's name. Robert Kennedy was a hero of mine and a man intimately familiar with tragedy. He was fond of how the poet Aeschylus described the anguish private struggle with grief. Even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until in our own despair, against our will, comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. Those of us who love Wyoming still often have a great deal of explaining to do about it. And sometimes we may even be successful at it in how we describe and place in context this single act of hatred that occurred there that brings us to these tables tonight without falsely explaining away as if it were some aberration. This is a delicate dance with a clumsy partner, but I have always believed Matt's home, my home, to be a place that is ultimately about determination in the face of adversity and reliance upon the virtues of self-sufficiency and circumspection about our neighbors' inner lives. I like to think the shepherd's work and ours helps others understand that just as hatred can happen anywhere, so can love. I came out of my closet and it changed my life forever. Today, those of us at this organization meet the next generation of LGBTQ people and their allies. And I sometimes wonder 
why my own revelation was so fraught and so frightening back then. But in talking to students today who still wrestle with this impulse to purely and honestly be themselves, I hear echoes of my own fears and I realize some things are timeless. That same decision to live our authentic lives is what led many of us to this room tonight. And what we can accomplish here together will literally change our country's history and the legacy we leave to future generations who are treading our same path. Judy and Dennis can be forgiven for not celebrating tonight as an anniversary, but instead observing it as a milestone. But they've been as shaped and inspired as any of the rest of us by recent events in our country and the powerful desire to answer back to this country and demand that it rededicate itself to the pursuit of equality and justice for everyone. They are, they are not in sackcloth and ashes here tonight. They are radiant in their desire to impel all of you and all of us to follow the example they've set, to help lead the people around you to a more loving future. They live full lives of gratefully and with tenderness, accepting the feelings of those who continue to care about their son and what he meant to them, to those of us who knew him and to this vast majority of people who never did. Because this work, Matt Shepard holds the promise of a kind of life beyond all of us. His parents, his mourners, his admirers, this namesake foundation, Matt will live on in all of these things and in the beautiful and artistic and literary works that drew their inspiration from his experiences. He'll live on in history textbooks and he will live on in the Federal Hate Crime Prevention Act that bears his name. This month, we also learned uh, that Matt will continue to be remembered in other ways, uh, as his belongings become part of the permanent collection of the Smithsonian Institution. And that he will achieve, at long last, his final and fitting resting place next week at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., alongside countless other great Americans who continue to inspire and challenge all of us to be better citizens. The day is going to come sooner than any of us dare to fear when all of us will be gone and with us, everyone who knew Matt or one of us. But that cathedral will still be there. The Smithsonian will still be there and Matt's story will go on inspiring and changing the world beyond our fondest hopes because of the work we rededicate ourselves to doing tonight. In everything from high school theater productions to State Department trip to Russia, if only we'd known then what we know now, the Matthew Shepard Foundation seeks to replace hate with understanding and compassion and acceptance. And the way we intend to do that is we're going to ask you to do it. We're going to ask everyone we ever talk to to do it. Because the time value of this work cannot be overstated. Our lives are vanishingly brief. The childhoods of our next generation are even shorter. We simply must succeed at this work and we must do it now. We each bear responsibility in our piece of the world for seeing to it that we all make gentle all of the lives of this world that we create together every day. So when you leave here tonight, take this work with you. Take the heart swell you feel and give it to the next person you meet. Take it to the next place you go. You will find that it is infectious, but there must be a carrier to begin the chain of connections. And you will feel strong and big and good that you are doing this. 
and you will remember and watch over the lives you change and save. I've worn Matt's story around like clothes most of the last 20 years. I've seen Judy and Dennis speak dozens of times. I've sat through the Laramie Project more than once in languages I don't speak. Three times. <laughs> but I never stop being amazed by the power of this single, simple story to galvanize so many hearts and minds to go out and change the world around them. And with the passage of time, I am more than ever taken out of my place of comfort and confronted with the stark reality that Matt's story continues to hold real power, not just to inspire people, but to change how we view progress and the passage of time itself. Matt's story recorded in cinema and music and poetry and literature and history and sculpture and paint and ink and paper in politics, in legislation, in folklore, and in tales passed from hand to hand, captures somehow the fullness of time that has grown around the single moment of that tragedy and around all pivotal moments in human history that present us with moral dilemmas and the opportunity to make the right choices to shape a future that we deserve and share a desire for. The fullness of Matt's story is before us. The birth, the growth, the decay, the death, the destruction, the love, the hatred is all here. The unbidden violence is here. The potential for forgiveness and growth are here. And in every moral dilemma in humankind's saga are these moments when we have clarity about the fullness of time and our place in it. And we are all the sum of all of our choices, but more, we are all of our choices, always, all of the time. That's why we have to make good ones. The most terrible thing any of us ever did in here, we're still doing it now. And the most noble, the kindest, the most generous thing you will ever do in your lifetime, you are doing it now be it in the past or the future, or at this moment. This room full of people has lived and achieved lives that are vastly beyond the fevered imaginations of our great-grandparents. And we live in a mist that obscures the view of us from the five generations in the future. But the decisions that we make now will shape the course of things to come and that future and those people and they must be informed by the shared values that we must champion at all times. And it is great works like the Matthew Shepard Foundation and all who celebrate and extend its influence that creates the surge of spirit that will give us the courage, that prods us down the road, that makes us create a better world. We must do it and we will do it. You and I will do it because we will leave this room tonight completely at peace and in harmony with the legacy of Matthew Shepard and our part in creating it with every new day. Thank you.